Hello there, and today I'm going to talk about something that society kind of expects us to do, and that's sharing a bed with our loved one. Now, I'm a bit of a Goldilocks sleeper. Some people around us uh, think it's a bit odd that my partner and I sleep in separate rooms, but I'm going to say why it is awesome for our relationship. Top of the why you shouldn't share a bed is the snoring. I'm not it. In the 42 years I've been on this planet, no one has ever told me that I've snored. So pretty much I'm an angel. The, uh, the, the, the only aspect is I do nose whistle. And sometimes I wake myself up with that. But I put earplugs in, so it doesn't matter if I nose whistle. Pretty much high on the list is the fact I'm a fidgeter. I get really uncomfortable. Um, I toss and turn a lot. I like to lie with a pillow between my knees. That makes it difficult to share a bed. It doesn't work. Sleeping temperatures. I'm a cold bug. He's a really hot reptile. I think that's how it works. I don't know. It doesn't work for me. I want my own donor to snuggle into. What the hell is he doing out there? If one of you wakes up hot in the middle of the night or cold, you want to adjust your bedding. When I have my bed to myself, I'm able to pull one donor back or put extra bedding on and it doesn't impact the other person. If they're in a different room, I say it's awesome. My darling did a wonderful thing for me. He bought me a gravity blanket. Bean bags sewn in, so it's like this big heavy, I think it's about 15 kilos. Oh, it's so, oh, oh, it's so good when you put it on. I want the blanket, you want the blanket. How's that gonna work when you're sharing a bed? It doesn't work. It's as simple as that. Now, have your own bed, better every time. It's a house that's built um, on the second floor and we've got the garage um, and storage space underneath. But what that means, and don't you judge before I say this, right? No judges. Um, we actually have rats um, and that's because they're looking for water because it hasn't rained for months. Um, and we have cats. And so last night, for example, my cat was trying to dig through the floorboards to get to what I assume was a rat scurrying around uh, under the floor. Would have been good actually if we shared a bed because then he could have gotten up and chucked the cat out the bedroom. Okay, undo my argument. It's great to have a bed sharing. Not! The next thing that works for him and I and the reasons why we sleep separately is he's a really early morning riser. He gets up at 4 a.m. And I'm a night owl. So it's not uncommon for me to be working till midnight. And if he's getting up at 4, he wakes me up. Four hours sleep. That's not good for me. You don't, well, get to, that. not good. Anyway, so he wakes early and that's not good for either of us. If I want to go to bed late, I don't want to wake him when he's been asleep for a couple of hours because he tries to go to bed about 10 o'clock. And then he's all snuggly and warm and I'm not getting in bed with the cold feet and, you know, electrocuting him with my cold toes. So separate rooms works. See, this, this just keeps stacking up. Okay, moving on. There's so much more. Other issues. This is just a bunch of stuff. Um, let's just talk about the horniness thing. He, men, we know they have things happening during the night that's beyond their control. And they, you know, wake up in the mood. I haven't even woken up yet. Go away. <laughs> I'm not interested. And then you wake up and you're all horny. It's like, oh, I want to get Randy with you. Oh, I haven't got the energy. I, I like, I'm not a morning person. I'm really not a morning person. Keep your horniness, keep your horns to yourself, boys. Sometimes you just want the bed to yourself. I think that's okay. Unless, I don't know, we, we won't go into that. A morning Mel. Morning Mel's not so nice, really. She's a bit grumpy if she's had a bad night's sleep. So it's better that I wake up on my own and set myself up for the day and then say good morning to him. That's a much better way to greet your partner than waking up in whatever state you happen to be, tired, and then him having to deal with that. That's not fair. Um, and it's also not fair for him to see the morning hair. Not pretty every day. I want my own bed. Oh, I have it. Yay! All right, I'm going to talk about another environmental issue in my household, and that is my cats. 
darling beautiful baby girls. So they'll jump onto the bed like it's a trampoline. Not uncommon for me to get a cold paw on the face. Go and join dad. Go into daddy's room. I get to sleep. You got me, Megan, not a big person, cats. Somehow they're like giants on the end. So when I'm trying to turn over and my frequent turning overness, take up the space at the bottom and you're trying to curl up and it's all cramped and they, it's just not good. So here's how and why it is good for your relationship. It's really lovely that we are taking turns at night to tuck one another in. It's really like, it provides variety for us. We go and have a little cuddle and he gets all snuggly and I tuck him in and then I give him a kiss good night and then I go back and do whatever work I'm doing. And then in the mornings, especially on the weekends, he wakes up before me and he'll come in and he'll crawl into bed next to me and we'll snuggle up and we'll fall back asleep. It's really nice. It's like bed dating. And then occasionally it's like, do you want to come into my bed? Yeah. You want to have some play time? It gives us a bit of difference and it spices up a little bit. It's like, I don't know, changing the environment up. I think it's good. We think it's good. And the last thing I want to talk about is, um, I love you, Regan. When he drinks, he kind of like turns into a troll man. He snores that much worse. It doesn't work. Hey Siri, spell troll. Troll. T-R-A-W-L. He can snore in any position, on his back, on his front, his side, doesn't matter. I don't like doing the whole elbow thing, but I do have to kind of like rock him to wake up. Hey Siri, how do you spell the fictional character troll? And so how does he turn into a troll and how am I supposed to sleep with a troll? How are we women supposed to sleep with our beautiful, loving, darling, gorgeous, loved trolls? What is a troll? An ugly cave dwelling creature depicted as either a giant or dwarf. We don't. You go sleep in your room. I'll sleep in my room. I'll see you in the morning. Um, hey Siri, what's a troll man? I'm oh, sorry babe, you kind of are. I believe they use sleep deprivation as a torture technique. Well, they're doing the movies anyway. Anyway! Yeah, uh, you get it? No funny jokes about Reagan, please. So, there definitely has to be some evidence around. Um, 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 